If you're thinking about teaching an online course, then you might be interested to know why I've chosen to teach on Skillshare in particular. Let's go. Hello friends, it's Matt Brunton here in the north of England and here in August 2021, I am launching out with my first online course. Now I'm going to talk today about the platform, why I've chosen to teach on Skillshare. Maybe that's something you're considering right now. So I've broke this down into three chapters. Number one, why I'm teaching. Number two, why I'm teaching on an education marketplace. And number three, why Skillshare in particular of all the marketplaces. So why am I teaching? Well, first of all, teaching is a great way to learn. I'm passionate about learning. I think learning is a big part of the human experience, a big part of our lives. It's not something that's in the past. I went to university twice, but I'm committed to keep learning, applying that knowledge in real world projects and continue to develop. And it's such a passion of mine. I get so much joy from improving and trying out new things and pushing myself. And teaching really helps reinforce the things that you learn and helps you reflect on your practice. So I want to keep learning. That's why I'm teaching. I'm also teaching because when you're passionate about something, sharing it is natural. If you met me in person, it wouldn't be too many minutes until I started talking about my three sons. Why? because I love them. So I want to share the things that uh, professionally have lit a fire in me and stirred that passion in me. And I love the chance to help other people get that, to let other people have a breakthrough. And when they start to apply that in their own work and see it work for them and they get a win, that is so rewarding. I've also been encouraged you know, more than a few times that I have some ability in the area of teaching. I've got quite a lot of experience. I've been doing uh, public speaking and different kinds of teaching for many, many years, and I enjoy doing it. So having some sort of ability and some sort of desire to do it means that it's a good fit for my career. And let me encourage you to find the things that make you come alive and make them more and more part of your work and your day as you progress through your career. Teaching also establishes you as an authority in a given subject. If you want to progress your career, this can be a really important thing. I remember when I went to university, my first undergraduate degree, I studied mathematics, and I asked one of the professors, why do you always keep talking about how this university is a research-led university and how proud you are of the research? How is that relevant to us as, as students trying to pass a course? I was pretty naive. I was the first person in my family to go to university. I didn't really understand academia. But his answer was brilliant and it, it started to unlock in me and started to help me understand this whole world. He said, would you rather be taught by the person who read the book or the person who wrote the book? And that helped me realize that when you're teaching something, like by writing a book, you don't necessarily make a lot of money from the book, but by writing something, you become an authority in that area and it opens so many more opportunities to you. So that's why I'm teaching in general. Why have I chose to teach on an education marketplace? Now there are alternatives. The biggest alternative is to have a self-hosted course. Now the platforms you could use for a self-hosted course, popular ones are Teachable, Thinkific, there's Kajabi which has marketing integration built in, there's Gumroad which is very quick to set up and you can sell all kinds of things on there, not just courses. And self-hosted is a great option for you if you have a large engaged audience, people who are with you, who are ready to buy from you, who already learn from you. If that's you, then self-hosted could be a great option. You've got a lot more control with self-hosted over the way things look, the way things feel, the structure of things, building a community, building a direct relationship with your students. The more of the technology and the decisions you control, the more you can customize the student experience. So that could be a good option for you. Economically, this is the low volume, high cost approach. And the price of self-hosted courses can be very elastic. I saw a tweet the other day. Sorry, I can't remember who it's from. I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. But and scrolling by, he, he mentioned this teacher that he'd increased the price of his online courses over time from $500 to $5,000 and not really seen any change in student demand. If anything, it went up. So the price is very elastic. So this is 
an economic model that is really suitable if you have an engaged audience. But if you don't, then you might want to go for the high volume, low cost approach, which is what education marketplaces tend to do. The next reason is audience. These education marketplaces have a large audience and currently I don't. So the self-hosted option is not really for me today, but these places have students who are ready and willing to learn. They're searching for courses. They're looking for things. So this could be a good option for you if you're in that scenario. It also helps to make the courses affordable. Now, I'm not against high price courses as long as they deliver high value. I think some of the courses that I've actually done myself that are in areas of professional development that can advance your career, I think they're absolutely worth the money. I mean, think about the cost of going to university or college. It's many thousands of dollars, pounds every single year and often the skills are not that practical. Now, I'm a big believer in university. I've been twice, but I think there's a lot of skills we need to learn in the real world that are very valuable. And online courses can be a great way to do that. And I might in the future get involved in that world of the higher price courses if they're very focused on outcomes for the student. And I feel like with integrity, this would be a thing that would really help someone advance in their career. Then I'm all for that. I think it's great that we have the option now to learn across the world from anybody in the world and we're not uh, limited by geography. But I'm going to teach on Skillshare in particular subjects, in particular areas that are perhaps tangential to what I'm doing every day professionally, but things I have done professionally and I have good experience in. And so I really like the ability to be able to deliver them at an affordable price for anyone. People can do this almost for free. I'll explain that later or at a very low cost. And I like that ability. So why Skillshare as opposed to other online marketplaces? Well, firstly is the model. So Skillshare's model is a monthly subscription. It's been called the Netflix or Spotify of online courses. And I felt that this was a really easy decision for people. If they're maybe not familiar with me already, they can take a course uh, with a free trial if you haven't already had a Skillshare trial. Or they, if you have or you're already a member, it's a very small monthly cost. Now, there are other online marketplaces where you pay per course, but the cost of their courses is usually the same or a little bit more than a one month membership to Skillshare. And with a Skillshare membership for a month, you've definitely got time to take my course and also check out courses from all the other people on there. So I felt it was a really easy sell for people. Now, if you're considering hosting on one of the other marketplaces, just good to be aware that Skillshare will pay you a royalty based on the number of minutes of your course that have been watched in total. And the other marketplaces that charge per course will pay you a percentage of the sales. So let's take Udemy for an example. If you sell a course on Udemy for £10 and most of the courses are very low priced when they sell, of that £10 or dollars or euros, you will only get around £3 or dollars or euros. So 30%, it's quite a small amount. So if you need to bring in a significant income, you're going to have to do a huge volume, many thousands of courses every month to bring in any significant income from that place. So it definitely is a high volume approach. So just be aware of those numbers if there's something that you're getting into. The content on Skillshare is another reason why I felt at home there. The vibe is generally more creative. Some of these other platforms felt a bit corporate, a bit dry. On Skillshare, there's some very legit teachers and there's a lot of design, photography, filmmaking. So I felt that was a better home for the students that I want to connect with. And finally, I'm a Skillshare member myself. I've taken a number of courses on there. So I felt that it had integrity. If I'm a student there, it's a good place to be a teacher. Never ask somebody to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. So if you're thinking of teaching your own online course, then you might be interested in my course. No, it's not another course on courses, but it's called Unboring Your Presentation. And it's all about how to make your public speaking more memorable and engaging. Now, who wants their students to be bored? In the age of constant distraction, that is a cardinal sin. So if that sounds like you, you can check it out via a link to a free trial down in the description. And there's so many great teachers on Skillshare. If you're a designer, there's people like Jessica Hish, Aaron Draplin, Paula Share, 
big name. So check that out. I also mentioned that I run an online one hour interactive team experience for onboarding your presentation that is hosted by Tribe Shake. So if you are a team leader, that might be for you. Link also in the description. Happy teaching.